Captain's Log, Subdate 20826.4. I see Sithy had some traps set in the Gungan's quarters. Much brave. So I had the traps moved to his private quarters, and erected a level 10 force field around it to insulate the rest of the ship. Welcome everyone to the Halls of Brackets in Close Brackets Justice. Today we have quite an interesting case to go through. Before that, I shall be streaming on Twitch tonight some Euro Truck Simulator 2. Link below. Back in 2019, Lindsay Burbeck, a 47-year-old mother of two, went missing in Accrington. Two weeks later, after a family believed she had had an accident, she was found in a shallow grave in Accrington Cemetery. Not long after, the police launched an appeal because they were having issues locating, but some video footage had come forward and their investigation had led them in the direction of a video clip. One particular clip concerning a wheelie bin and a young man. The police put out an appeal with this video being in the appeal. For this, we now need to introduce two other people, Creddy and Martina Price, who have for several generations lived in this area of the country, to the point where you will find several generations worth of Price members in the Accrington Cemetery. They saw the video footage and recognised the young man pulling the wheelie bin. That young man happened to be their son, named after one of the most famous boxers of all time, Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano at the time was 17 years old, and is, because this was referenced in the court case, I'm going to reference it now as it will crop up later, autistic, along with suffering from ADHD, who also attended a school that was better suited to his special needs. The parents did right when they realised it was him by marching him to the police station. They will find their honorary judge badges in the post soon. Initially, Rocky Marciano Price had claimed he did move Burbeck's body, along with burying her, because he was promised money. He did, however, state emphatically that he did not kill her. During the investigation, it was proven that he had gone for a walk, and he had in fact been stalking women, where he had in fact found Lindsay and then killed her. Simple as that, really, but there is a little more to it. The injuries on her neck were indicative of somebody kneeling on her, and there was also the fact that somebody had attempted to cut off her leg with a saw. Bit strange. Originally, Rocky Marciano Price faced two trials, as the initial case had been halted in March. Now, it was stopped after an unconnected police investigation into false imprisonment found mobile phone footage of a man claiming he was involved in Lindsay Baerbeck's murder and the disposal of her body. Rocky Marciano Price's defence team successfully argued that the jury should be discharged on the basis he could not receive a fair trial, and they needed time to explore the footage. At that time, Mrs Justice Yip said it was unusual and unfortunate that the evidence has emerged during the trial, adding that if the case had continued, the matter would have been pursued to the Court of Appeal on grounds of possible fresh evidence. Eventually, 20 police officers investigated this and concluded the information in the footage was false, which then allowed for a second trial to proceed. The identity of Rocky Marciano Price was kept stum because anyone under the age of 18 has automatic anonymity, but with his conviction, he is now name-shamed, hard-feathered and on blast, which would explain now why we are able to talk about this. During the trial, the jury were told that he had no previous convictions or cautions, and had lived all his life with his parents and five siblings at their home near the cemetery, with him being exceptionally quiet and having learning difficulties. But his specialist needs were provided for by his family, a very supportive family. This being supported by his teachers, who verified that he was very quiet and pretty much non-verbal, with his teacher Timothy Bradley telling the trial, also the name of a boxer, that's interesting, he used to enjoy doing artwork. He used to do gardening as well with the local community group or help sand down and varnish a bench. He is a strong walker. He did the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh Award with him, which involves walking 13 kilometres and camping for a night, then going for a walk the following morning 
which he would complete no problem. He was definitely strong for his age. In 2015, Rocky Marciano Price was psychologically assessed. They concluded he had a limited understanding of his own emotional well-being and appeared to have very little insight into the link between events and emotions. In every article I've seen covering this case, this is all relevant information. They really wanted to make an emphasis on the fact that he clearly had issues. His IQ is even referenced at 65. After the trial, yes, we're skipping ahead because this is semi-relevant to understanding why he was made public. Justice Yip had said, The murder was a truly shocking event. This was a dreadful crime which generated strong public interest. The public naturally wished to know who this person was as they come to terms with something that rocked the local community. The defendant's photograph was already placed in the public domain as part of a CCTV appeal. I consider it inconceivable anybody who would wish him ill harm would not discover his identity. The wider public are likely to want to know his identity and background with a view to make sense of how such a young person could do something so dreadful. There is a strong public interest in full and unrestricted reporting of what is plainly an exceptional case. The real public interest exists now at a time of conviction and sentence. Continuing reporting restrictions would substantially and considerably restrict the freedom of the press. His defense had tried to argue that because of his vulnerabilities, he shouldn't have been named. But as he's been found guilty and is 18, that is no longer applicable. With barrister Mark Stewart, his defense saying, Rocky Price's difficulties are particularly with verbal or the lack of verbal communication and the difficulties he will have within a prison setting. Just to segue before we get to the sentence, and of course, whether or not he was found guilty, 19,000 people had joined a Facebook group to assist emergency services with the search of Lindsay. That tells you just how close that community was and also how hard they were willing to work together to find somebody. Bit of a damning statement, really. And it should be also noted, another woman had reported seeing him when he was stalking her in the same area, which shows premeditation. So now I guess we should get to the conclusion of this. Rocky Marciano Price was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life with a minimum tariff of 16 years in custody. With Mrs. Justice Yip saying that while Rocky Marciano Price's autism had a significant impact on his communication skills and reduced his capacity for empathy, it did not cause him to be violent, and that in her judgment, the defendant's mental disorder cannot in any way excuse or ever explain his actions. Along with saying, I have no doubt he knew what he was doing when he killed Lindsay Burbeck, and that he knew that killing her was terribly wrong. His actions after killing clearly suggest he had the capacity to plan and reason, and that the defendant was also capable of putting forward a story which, while incredible, was designed to explain the evidence against him. It is also worth noting that at no point during the investigation, and no point during either trial, and at no point post-trial when convicted, did Rocky Marciano Price ever admit guilt, which has caused considerable distress to the family of Lindsay Burbeck. As far as the sentence goes of 16 years minimum on a life sentence, sure. But good luck trying to get him to prove any kind of guilt in that time. It is highly likely, based on what we know of him, he'll be there for life, which I believe is 25 years. With this case, I'm very much interested to know what you think. So please do let me know in the comments down below. If I don't see you on Twitch tonight for Euro Truck Simulator 2, have a fantastic Wednesday, and thank you all for listening.